Okay, uh, good morning uh, friends. I thank the organizers, Dr. Rishi, Dr. Hema, Dr. Sumit for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences on uh, the newer advances that have happened with the pigmented or the Q-switch lasers in the recent past. Uh, we'll all agree that laser technology is the wonder of present-day dermatological therapeutics. We do so many things now with lasers and, and lasers have become a part and parcel of all uh, the, uh, of all the dermatologists' practice. Now, there have been huge advances since we first started with, with use of lasers. The ruby lasers were used in late 60s and since then we have come a long way. Currently, uh, there are a number of uh, lasers that are used for treatment of pigmented lesions. We have the red light lasers, ruby and alexandrite, the green light lasers, the pulse dye, frequency doubled 532 NDAG. We have the uh, near infrared 1064 NDAG. The reason why we have a very wide range of lasers that can target the pigment is because melanin, the chromophore for the pigmented lesions, has a very wide range or wide spectrum of absorption, right from about 600 nanometers to about 1200 nanometers. Uh, presently, these are the lasers that are used for pigmented lesions. We have the Q-switched uh, NDAG-532, Ruby, Alexandrite, and NDAG, all of them in the Q-switched mode. If you go back to history, uh, Neon Goldman in the 60s used uh, the first Q-switched Ruby laser. What he did is, is that he used a 50 microsecond uh, pulse duration uh, Ruby laser, and he saw that the damage that happened to the pigmented lesions was independent of the damage happening to the surrounding skin. The surrounding skin was spared when he used a pulse width of 50 microseconds, but he didn't know why it was happening. And nothing was happening thereafter as far as the studies are concerned for up to 20 years following this, when Paula et al. and Dower et al., they did separate studies and they demonstrated that this Q switching targeted specifically melanosomes, which are the basic component of the pigmented lesions and contain the melanin. They said that this can be done by placing a window in the beam, uh, uh, path of the laser beam so that you can deliver very short ultra pulses of this laser energy at very high fluences. And these ultra short pulses target specifically the melanosomes within the pigmented lesions. And the results are produced by the, uh, by the principle of photothermolysis and also by the effect of, known as the photoacoustic effect. There's a very short snapping sound that is produced when this uh, ultra short pulse hits the skin. And this short snapping sound also leads to bursting of the melanosomes and liberation of the melanin from these melanosomes. Now, uh, the conventionally used Q-switched lasers for pigmented and uh, tattoo skins uh, have been, have been uh, very useful to treat these lesions, but over the last decade, the applicability of these Q-switched lasers has widened considerably. Uh, the pigmented lesions that were treated with conventional methods can now be treated with some changes in the parameters in these lesions to improve the outcome and decrease the side effects. For example, the tattoos that would take a number of sessions up to maybe 20 or 30 to clear the tattoos completely now can be cleared up much faster by change of the technique and parameters which is which I'll come to later on. By modifying the pulse width of the Q-switch laser from a ultra ultra short picosecond pulse width to a microsecond pulse width you can improve the texture of the skin now with the same pigmented laser. You can treat tattoos much more effectively than you could treat them earlier. And minor modifications in the hand pieces now can create new wavelengths in the same Q-switched laser so that you can treat difficult tattoo inks like green and yellow for which you would have to resort to a different laser wavelength earlier. So what's new in the Q-switched lasers? Uh, one of the most important things that has happened to the Q-switch lasers recently is the development of this technique called the laser toning. Uh, laser toning involves repeated sessions of uh, done at weekly intervals of a low dose or a low fluence Q-switched NDAG 1064 using a large spot size. Uh, this is being very widely used in our subcontinent in and in the Southeast, uh, Southeast Asian countries for the rejuvenation of the skin and particularly for treatment of melasma, which was a very difficult condition and was the lasers were an absolute no-no to melasma earlier. The large spots size seems to spare the epidermal pigment because it penetrates deep into the skin and the low fluence uh, avoids collateral damage so that rebound pigmentation does not happen. 
there are a number of studies from, uh, from particularly from Southeast Asia uh, on this laser toning. Uh, for example, this study done by Vatrakna et al. on 22 of their uh, uh, patients of dermal and mixed melasma, they used these low fluences of 3 to 3.8 joules, did weekly sessions, uh, 5 sessions total. They also used 2% hydroquinone. On one side of the face, they did, this was a split face study, on one side of the face they used 2% hydroquinone and laser toning for treatment of melasma and on the other side they used just 2% hydroquinone and they found that within 5 sessions there was a 92.5% improvement on the combination treated side compared to the, which was significantly more than the control side which was only hydroquinone. They found that 13.6% of the patients also developed spotty hypopigmentation about 18% had rebound hyperpigmentation, particularly melasma patients. So rebound hyperpigmentation does happen and you need to put these patients on uh, maintenance. Zhao et al. also did similar study on 50 of their patients and found a 35.8% improvement and they concluded that the ultimate outcome will depend upon the severity of the disease at the beginning of the treatment. Jiang et al. did a very interesting study. Uh, they studied the efficacy and adverse effects of this laser toning with triple combinations used either before the laser toning or after laser toning. So a very interesting study, a split face crossover study in 13 of their patients. They used the same laser toning mode. They did weekly sessions for eight weeks, but on one side of the face, they pre-treated the area with a triple combination for eight weeks prior to laser toning. And on the other side, they started the triple combination following this laser toning. And what they found was, that the pre-treatment with the triple combination was much, much more effective. And they said that this happens because if you treat the lesions with a triple combination prior to laser toning, the melanocytes which are very sensitive to uh, light of the lasers get numb or are, you know, uh, the, the, their, their uh, ability to produce pigment is reduced so that when you expose them, PIH, like LPP, reels, uh, chronic disease pigmentation and residual pigmentation of vitiligo. Uh, we have this machine which has a large spot size of 5 by 5 square millimeters. Normally most of the uh, machines have, uh, have a round spot which is not as good as a square spot. So we have a 5 by 5 square, a low fluence of 1 to 2 joules as used by other studies was used and a repetition of 10. Weekly sessions, several passes at each session, the end point would be just a little erythema and edema, no frosting, no ecchymosis. You have to be careful not to produce that because that will produce side effects. The results have been encouraging patients of, for example, melasma who were absolutely resistant to conventional treatments showed fairly good results. Side effects were minimal. A little bit of repound hyperpigmentation did happen in melasma, but no hypopigmentation which was reported in some studies from the southeast. Uh, we have had acquired several uh, Q-switched NDAG lasers and this is the latest that we have acquired. This is a high-end machine with a high power output and typically has a large spot size, which is very important. A large spot size, particularly a square spot size, is very useful in this kind of laser toning. And these are some of the results. These patients who had not been doing well with uh, the conventional uh, treatments for melasma, for example, peels and uh, hypopigmenting agents, started improving with, uh, with the laser toning. Uh, this patient had melasma all over the face from here to here. Everything cleared with the conventional treatments including peels, but this part did not probably because the pigment here was deeper in the, uh, in the dermis. So this then responded very well to laser toning. Uh, we have been using laser toning also in this kind of patients where we would have a post-burn scar with hyperpigmentation, a combination of fractional and, and laser toning uh, leads to considerable improvement in the pigment also. Uh, LPP, after two sessions, I have lost this patient to follow up thereafter, showed some improvement in the color of the pigment. Chronic disease associated with pigmentation, pigmentary demarcation lines not improving with any therapy showed a little bit of improvement with uh, laser toning. A leftover pigment of uh, vitiligo where the patient uh, uh, did not do very well with topicals, particularly getting lots of sensitivity and erythema with uh, agents like 20% ether of hydroquinone, did very well and she's on follow-up. The, there has been no repigmentation after five years uh, of doing this. She is still with me on follow-up. 
The other good thing that has developed recently with Q-switch lasers is the new technique of treating the tattoos. This is known as the R20 technique. The tattoos uh, are commonly coming to us uh, these days because the number of people getting them done is increasing. They can be classified into decorative, cosmetic, traumatic, medical. The decorative ones are the commonest and those can be amateur and prof or professional. The amateur tattoos are carbon-based ink and they, they are more superficial and very easy to treat. But the professional ones are deep, denser and more difficult to treat. These are the general guidelines that we should follow while treating tattoos. In patients, you try and avoid a tanned patient or take extreme precautions. Use an appropriate wavelength. For a red tattoo, you use 532. For a blue, green, uh, blue or black tattoo, you use 1064. For a green tattoo, you use 694. But now, recently, we have the newer machines which can produce these wavelengths and treat these colors also. That is, that is what is one of the new things happening. R20 technique uh, is a wonderful revolutionary technique that has been developed recently. Instead of the conventional treatment of tattoos with up to maybe 20, 25 sessions done every two to three weeks, now we have this R20 technique which can clear up most of the tattoos within two to three sessions. The patient is given three to four passes at each sitting with, with intervals of 20 minutes in between. So why 20 minutes? Because frosting that happens after each session is a laser opaque uh, situation where the laser light can't penetrate into the skin. So we wait for 20 minutes, let the frost settle down and the skin or the lesion is ready then for the next session. So we repeat the passes every, every 20 minutes and give three to four passes at each session and this leads to rapid clearance of the tattoo and it may clear within two to three sessions only. The problem, uh, uh, the problem with R20 technique is that each session would last about three to four hours. You have to give it every 20 minutes, about three to four passes, so the patient has to sit in the clinic for about three to four hours. So, uh, Ready et al. Uh, took up this new technique called the R0 technique. In the R0 technique, they use this compound called perfluorodecalin. This perfluorodecalin is a fluorocarbon, is a fluorocarbon which is colorless and innate and inert, sorry, has a low surface tension, it has, high uh, it has a high gas solubility and a high optical clarity, it rapidly absorbs the gas bubbles that are created within this frost after treatment with a, with a Q-switched laser. And because it absorbs this, these gas bubbles, the frost is gone and immediately after the first session on application of this perfluorodecalin, you can re-expose the skin to the next uh, you know, pass so that you don't have to wait for 20 minutes and, uh, and give the pass. So whatever was done in three to four hours now can be, uh, can be done uh, quite uh, within a few minutes only. So some of the results in our patients, for example, this patient who uh, had been undergoing, he had undergone at least nine conventional Q-switch laser sessions for, with some clearance. And this is immediately after uh, one pass first session, after three passes first session, you can see the uh, inflammation. When the patient came back for the second session, he was here, we gave one pass, three passes. And this is the amount of clearance that happened in just two sessions which were done 15 days apart. He did not do, the f do, do further sessions because he had to go for some uh, employment in some airline. So you can see clearance happening within two sessions to this extent, which had not happened, uh, happened over nine sessions earlier. Amateur tattoos can be cleared in just one session. Now some other newer things that have happened to the Q-switched lasers. Uh, the newer machines can, are now coming with varied hand pieces. For example, one of the companies uh, has these four or five hand pieces in addition to the zoom, conventional zoom hand piece. They have the fractional hand piece, which decreases the thermal damage to the dermis and allows uh, quicker healing and recovery time. They also have these hand pieces that employ special solid dye kits so that they can produce wavelengths of uh, say for 585 and 660 and these wavelengths can treat tattoo inks which could not be treated with the Q-switch and diag laser earlier. For example, green ink would require a separate ruby laser earlier. Now we can treat it with the same laser. So this is something new that has happened. Also, some of the newer machines have what is known as the photoacoustic twin pulse mode. The photoacoustic twin pulse mode uh, delivers energy in two pulses of high output energy, which reduces the chances of injury, chances of post inflammatory hypo and hyperpigmentation, and the uh, treatment is also painless. 
Another mode that has come up in some of the machines is the genesis mode. Here, they have given us a new pulse width of about three, uh, 300 microseconds. The 300 microsecond uh, pulse width in the same q switched NDAG 1064 improves the texture and superficial wrinkles and the abrasions of the skin. So in addition to treating the pigmentation, treating the sallow skin, you can also improve the uh, texture of the skin. In fact, the combination of laser toning and genesis can do wonders with a dull, sheenless skin. For example, in this patient, 10 sessions of a combination of laser toning and genesis has led to considerable improvement in not only the color but the texture of the skin. In this patient also you can see the improvement in 10 sessions with a combination of laser toning and genesis. Some more applications, carbon peel for inflammatory acne has been employed use, uh, recently using the Q-switched NDAG laser. Not only does it improve the inflammatory acne but it also improves the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation associated with acne. Uh, you apply a carbon lotion, wait for 20 minutes for the carbon lotion to settle down and go into the pores. Then first you expose to a quasi-long mode, 300 microsecond, one pass at two joules. Then you use the usual conventional Q-switched nanosecond mode, give a, give a single pass. And then give two additional laser toning passes. This is the, this is the, uh, profile, this is the, uh, the method that has been laid down. And uh, it works by, uh, you know, carbon acts as a, as a photo enhancer. At 300 microseconds, it gradually heats these carbon particles. The heat penetrates into the epidermis and the dermis and kills the propionibacterium acne. The nanosecond pulse, res uh, uh, pulse width results in instantaneous blasting of the carbon, heats the stratum corneum, improves the pore size and also the texture and pigmentation. So all this put together improves the acne inflammatory acne as well as the PIH associated with it. Another new development in Q-switched acne uh, lasers is the picosecond lasers. Tattoos that have been conventionally treated with the nanosecond lasers on the basis of the, of the theory that the ink particles are usually of, a, of the size of 0.1 to 1 micrometers and they have a thermal relaxation time of less than 10 nanoseconds. So anything less than 10 nanoseconds, say maybe 5 to 10 would be what we would be using earlier. But lately they have found that some of the tattoo particles can be much smaller than that, so they would require a pulse width much shorter than what we are conventionally using. And that's probably why we are not able to clear most of the uh, tattoos completely and ghost images are left. So in came the picosecond lasers where the pulse width is 10 raised to minus 9 of a second. The nanosecond is 10 raised to minus 6 of a second. This is minus 9 of a second, so much shorter. So that we can treat much smaller ink particles and the results are much superior to the nanosecond lasers. And we have uh, this technology available both in 1064 and 755 nanometers now. Extending its uh, scope further, the Q-switched lasers are now also used for treatment of onychomycosis. And there are several studies available now that show that it is effective in onychomycosis. The principle is same, selective photothermolysis. It has been found that the uh, fungal uh, mycelia are sensitive to uh, temperatures of 55 degrees centigrade and above and if you uh, expose the infected nail to a quasi-long 300 microsecond uh, pulse width uh, with energies of 25 joules you can lead to sustained heating of the mycelia which leads to death of the fungi. Sessions are done at weekly intervals and four to five sessions lead to a considerable improvement in the onychomycosis. And there are several lasers now that have been used for this purpose, not only the microsecond pulses but also millisecond pulse widths have also been used. So friends, to conclude, Q-switched lasers are a very effective tool for the treatment of pigmented lesions. Since their inception in the late 60s, they have come a long way from the conventional use, the Q QSL's versatility has improved drastically. They are now used for a number of more indications than were previously used. Laser toning is one of the very wonderful techniques that has been developed recently. Uses large spot sizes and low fluence to reduce the likelihood of rebound hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation. Tattoos can now be treated very effectively with the R20 technique. Uh, the R0 technique, which is a further advancement, reduces the time required at each session. They can, QSLs can now be used for a number of other indications like onychomycosis, carbon and soft peels for acne. 
difficult tattoos removed with uh, same laser using different wavelengths, picosecond lasers used for treating tattoos and pigmented lesions much more effectively, and the fractional mode now available to reduce the collateral damage. Thank you very much, friends, for your kind attention.